The noise you can hear is the sound of nutrient recycling. Harnessing the good that is still left in the things that we throw away as a planet every day and turn over to landfill. But the people doing the work today aren't people, they're larvae, fly larvae, the black soldier fly specifically. The black soldier fly only lives for four days and it's not interested in eating, it's not interested in drinking. That's why it doesn't come and annoy us in our homes like the housefly. It has one thing on its mind and that's reproduction. And that is exactly what we need them to do. Black soldier fly is ideally suited for the biodegradation of organic waste because it is um, not a pest species. It won't come into your house. It won't carry disease around. It won't sit on your food and the larvae are extremely hardy. They have the ability to break down just about anything for, from carbohydrates right through to high protein substances. The black soldier fly isn't currently commercially used for cleaning up fecal matter in, in any way, but we do find the larvae in the toilets and, and they do consume the fecal matter. The first trials that we did are very, very promising. They do have the ability to break it down. What's nice about it is there's almost no smell if they start breaking it down. So it changes it into a compost, a friable compost quite quickly. And um, the, the larvae harvest themselves, you can then clean them and render them, get the oil out for biodiesel production, and the rest of the protein can then go to, to, to animal feed. Um, we tested the larvae meal in, in poultry production, and we tested right through from farm to fork to um, testing the meat quality and the palatability, the sensory qualities of the meat in the end. And the products were found to be better or equal to fish meal in all instances and better than soya in all instances. The black soldier fly stuff, that research has been ongoing for a long time, but I think specifically looking at fecal waste and human waste is, is, is very new. Making it viable by creating an economic value for waste. Our program and our technology was conceived in the heads of scientists and with universities and networks of people around the world. But it's here that it has its application. It's here where people's arse end is our front end. got no sports hall, no community centre, a toilet building like this can become the heart and soul of a community and that means that it needs a leader that's at the centre of the heart and soul of that community and that's where Meter comes in. Meter, what do you understand by sanitation and the role that that has on people's health? Yeah, um, this toilet does make a big difference into this community because for a lot of years, about 30 years, we have never had toilets in this community. And uh, the, when these toilets come here, you know, it changes people's lives, you know, it brings safety, it brings privacy, it brings respect to women and men and children, you know. Our children still are busy getting used to being private, to be in a toilet, you know, because of being used to sit in the open air, you know, not having cover, you know, and uh, the, about what the health is concerned, you know, we are appreciating this because it's, it's it's healthy it's clean and for me as the community leader and, and somebody who works here it's a pleasure for me and it's very important for me to keep it clean because we never had this opportunity we never had this you know and we really thankful you know to, to God for giving us this and the people who thought of this uh, bringing it to, to this community of Puxa Boss. If, if you take Puxa Boss for example that is that unit we could build potentially one for $15,000. Right, $15,000, we could then supply sanitation services to at least 500 people. Then the rest of the business could be completely self-sustainable, that you have a caretaker there that we saw, Mita. Mita could be paid from revenues from the lava. And so we can also increase, like what we're trying to do for Lippi at the pilot project, where we actually create an offtake for the lava by, by building a chicken farm that someone would then be able to sell eggs, which is eaten all over the de developing world, sometimes as the only source of animal protein, um, that we can supply that back into the community. And I think that's what makes BioCycle interesting and what 
what we're very passionate about is to actually develop the te technology with the with the community and to see how the one feeds into the other so that it really does at least provide people with, with more modern sanitation. The BioCycle, powered by the University of Stellenbosch and AgriPro team, with great assistance from people like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, have been able to be the bridge, the opportunity to take donor money and deliver real solutions that could revolutionise microagriculture in Africa and beyond. But there's another stage, and for that, we need to go and spark entrepreneurial businesses across these poor territories. We need your help. Let us be the magnifying glass. Let us be the bridge from your donor dollars to the man on the street. Let us deliver the revolution that we need in nutrient recycling.